Hello, and once again, we're in Ian's kitchen. Today, we've got a very, very special question, and it's nice and simple, and I've done it so easy in layman's terms, I don't think it could be any easier. So are you ready? Now, now, what we have, quite simply, the box of roses is the royal mint. The box of eggs is, is the royal mint experience. Over there is the non-existent post office that the royal mint say they get their coins from. Over there is the lorry that takes the coins that the royal mint makes and it takes them to the cash centres where the cash centres then distribute those coins to banks and post offices, proper post offices and banks, existing ones, ones that actually exist. See, now why is all this so important? Let me tell you why this is so important. The Royal Mint, in the Royal Mint manufacturing plant, make all the 10 P's, right? 10 P's like this, they make. Take one out of the packet, I should have had some done already. Now I can't get the bloody packet open. So, the Royal Mint makes the 10 P's. The 10 P's, they, they all get put on a lorry, those 10 P's. Now, for 2018, there was 210,000 of each letter made. And they make them in here, as they tell you, when you go on the Royal Mint Experience trip and have a walk around the factory, what they tell you is they make the coins in the factory and they even show you the lorries that the coins go on. The coins get made in the factory, they go on the lorry. That's 210,000 letter, shall we say, this one is an X. So 200,000, 210,000 letter X's get made and they go all the way on the lorry, all the way, all the way, all the way to the banana cake, which is the cash handling center. Now from there, they get taken off the lorry and they go into the cash handling center and they go to the back of the 10 P's because there's obviously other 10 P's in the cash handling center at the front. So these ones, these go to the back and they come off the lorry and they go in the warehouse and then coins filter through and when they want to then, um, when they want to deliver them to the post offices, round the front there, we take on the coins that are at the front and then the ones that are at the back move forward and we take those and we deliver them to no, we deliver them to post offices. Hence, this box. Only this box is non-existent. It doesn't exist. And that lorry goes off to post offices and places like that and it delivers the money. So, the Royal Mint, they say, the Royal Mint says, mind the banana cake, the Royal Mint says, that it makes the money in the factory, it puts it on the lorry, the lorry, and this is the manager of the Royal Mint Experience saying this, not me, manager of the Royal Mint Experience. They make it, they put it on the lorry. The lorry goes off to the cash handling centre, where the money comes off, goes in the back. Then we have, so the money comes off, goes in the back. There's your 10 P's, right? In the back of the warehouse, okay? We'll just put them there for a minute. But they come off the lorry in their crates and they'll get delivered to the back of the warehouse. Now, when the cash handling center wants to send money to the post offices, 
front of the warehouse, money onto the lorry. Struggling to see how, this is one part of the question, how do the Tempe's get from the back of the warehouse to the front of the warehouse when everything is controlled? Everything is controlled. I mean, you can't have 2017s going out before the 2016 and 2015s that are still in the warehouse, surely. So, it all has to be in a range date order. They don't just chuck them in and mix them all up. All the crates are in order. So, your A to Zs are at the back here, just been minted, 2018. You've got to get rid of all the 16 and 17s, yeah? But somehow, mysteriously, the A to Z's come to the front of that and get on the lorry. And then what the Royal Mint says is that those coins get delivered to post offices. There we go. And this is the post office that the Royal Mint manageress of the Royal Mint experience, which is the egg box, she says that the Royal Mint get their A to Z 10 P's that go in their tills, in their tills, in the Royal Mint shop and experience, they come like everybody else from a post office. This post office. This is the special post office. This is the bestest post office in the whole wide world in the country, this is. Because this post office here is where the Mint gets all the coins that go into their tills. They come from this post office. And with a straight face, the manageress looked me in the eye and told me that they get their coins like everybody else. Now I was at that trip and with a load of coin tubers and I said to the manageress, well, at the end of the day, I don't believe you because every single one of us want to go to that post office. Every coin tuber in the country wants to go to that post office. Every coin collector in the country wants to know where that post office is. Why is that post office so secret? Why don't we know? Why won't they tell us where that post office is? I'll tell you the answer to that, because it's non-existent. So the question is, what I want to know is how do the A to Z coins end up in the Royal Mint Experience Shop, which is the egg box. How do the coins get from the manufacturing plant behind the egg box into the tills of the Royal Mint Experience? The Royal Mint say they come in their tills like everybody else from a post office, but they won't say where that post office is. I say that's a load of hogwash. I say that's a load of lies and rubbish. What I say is, the Royal Mint makes them and then they take a few and they put them there at the back of the warehouse and then when they're ready, they just go and get some more and put them in the Royal Mint Experience shop. And the reason I say this is because we have physically seen with our own eyes thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of these coming from somewhere and coming into the tills of the Royal Mint shop. So what's the question then? Well, the question is sort of easy, really. What I want to know is, two parts is the question. I want to know how do the coins get into the Royal Mint Experience shop? If 210,000 of a particular letter have to be made, and on behalf of the Treasury, get sent to banks and post offices and cash centres around the country so that the money goes out fairly across the country, how do they get into the Royal Mint Experience tills? Because they're not allowed to make them for themselves. They're not allowed to put the extras that they make, the ones that they sell, they're not allowed to put those in the tills. So... How are they doing it? Are they making extra money just to bolster up their sales? Because it's a phenomenal exercise. You have to understand that if, you know, these coins are worth a couple of three quid each, two, three, four quid each, some of them. 
So when you get five coins in your change from the Royal Mint Experience shop, you're getting anywhere from, if you said they were worth two quid each, you're getting anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds. Just by getting five, 50 p, five, 10 p's. So it's worth your while going into the Royal Mint Experience shop, buying a packaged coin for a tenner, and then getting five, 10 p's in your change. It's absolutely worth it. And it's worth it because you pay £10 for the Royal Mint packaged 50p or £2 coin or whatever, 11 quid, but you're going to get back 10 to £15 worth of 10p's in your change, 5, 10p's. It is a phenomenal marketing exercise on behalf of the Mint. It is a brilliant, brilliant marketing exercise from the Mint. The only thing is, <clears throat> I think it's illegal. I think what they're doing is illegal. My shop would be the best coin shop in the entire country if I can put loads and loads and loads of these in my tills at 10p each and offer them in change to people who come into my shop and spend money. There are people at the Royal Mint that are absolutely doing some really bad illegal stuff. And with money, they are literally minting their own money. There's only two ways you can have this money in their till. One, 210,000 did not go on the lorry. Two, they made extra. But if you can look me in the eye and tell me that the Royal Mint did not make extra, and if you can look me in the eye and tell me that 210,000 of every single letter went off to a cash handling centre, then what I don't understand is how the Mint have had in their Royal Experience, Mint Experience shop, I don't understand how they've had hundreds of thousands of 10 P's go through their tills. Where do they come from? Where do they come from? Now, if you can answer this question to my satisfaction, then I will give you five grand's worth of merchandise. Five grand's worth. So there's £5,000 that you can win, just by answering a simple question. Now, think about this for a second. If the question was so easy to answer, then within hours, we will have somebody from the Royal Mint Experience Shop or somebody from the Royal Mint, just a low level, low level employee who knows the answer to that because they're absolutely straight down there. And that low level employee will come on and go, it's so easy, this is the answer, it's so easy. I'll look like a lemon, I'll have a red face. And the question will be answered. That simple. Answer the question and win five grand. Don't matter about the money troubles I'm in, I can still put up five grand's worth of merchandise, that's nothing at all. Five grand's worth of merchandise is nothing to me. So I can put that up. So five grand to win from any one of you, from this ugly mug, if you can answer that simple question. And the question's being posed by Ian, www.thegreatbritishcoinhunt.com. The Great British Coin Hunt. It's all supposed to be about hunting coins in Britain. How can you hunt for those coins in Britain and Newcastle and Scotland and Shropshire and Northern Ireland if they don't even leave the grounds of the mint? What chance have you got, anybody, of getting hold of these coins if they are being made and being used in the Royal Mint's tills? Still now, today, they're being used in the Royal Mint's tills. And this has been going on for months and months. I've seen that with my own eyes. And I have 20 people that have seen it with their own eyes. So either we're all seeing something that's wrong or there's a lot of shady business going on here. There you go. Answer the question, win five grand. It's that simple. Lastly, what I say to you is, you could even win this by making a simple phone call, 10 minutes out of your life. All you've got to do is phone up the Royal Mint and ask them. And if every one of you was to phone them up and ask them yourself, and then whatever they said to you was the answer, put that in the comments section. 
Now, what I'm wondering, I'm wondering whether or not all of your comments about what the Royal Mint said to you is the answers are going to be the same, or if you're all going to be given different stories. That'll be interesting. So, why not do that too? You know, if you can't answer the question, ring up the Mint and ask them. Let them answer the question for you, and you come back and give the answer. And if you can satisfy me, then you'll win. It's that simple. I don't think you can.